Hey guys, and welcome back to the Russell Pierce channel. My name is Isra, also known as the First Lady around here, and I'm super excited because today we're going to be doing a special interview for the Russell Pierce podcast. We're doing it big today because uh, I'm going to be talking to Big Stoke, Stokely Hathaway. There's a lot of exciting things happening right now with him and an AEW. We're going to get into Mercedes Monet's return, Chris Statlander, Willow Nightingale, his time in ROH. We're even going to talk about some real stuff. Um, we're both fasting. It's Ramadan. So shout out to him for making it today while he's fasting and for working while he's fasting. Uh, it's so commendable of him and all the other athletes who are fasting to be able to do this. So, um, yes, thank you guys so much for all of your support. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. And as always, um, keep an eye out. We're always going to be doing more interviews. You just never know what's going to happen on this channel. So uh, stay tuned as always. So let's get into it. Hello, uh, and welcome to uh, the Russell Pures podcast. Uh, today we have none other than Stokely Hathaway with us today. We're super excited. Uh, thank you so much for joining. Of course. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. Yes. So uh, first I want to say um, Ramadan Karim to you. Um, so I heard you've been fasting and like um, yes. on your dean, right? Yes. Yes. You have, you have been um, uh, a major resource for me in educating me. So. <laughs> oh, so, really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I'm actually, oh, I didn't even know that. Um, oh yeah. <laughs> Tell me why I'm this slow. Um, so uh, have you been like fasting while you're working and everything? Yes, yes. So what like- that, really, What's that like? So like, I normally don't eat like a lot of meals like throughout the day. I normally eat like something like small in the morning and then like a big meal at dinner. So I'm kind of used to it. Um, the only issue is like, you know, I really love tea and gum mm -hmm. and uh, <laughs> just like, <laughs> Uh, uh, and diet sodas, so like that has been, you know, the main, the main uh, struggle. But you know, aside from that, like it's been, it's been good. Yeah. No, the worst struggle is always caffeine and not being a hater. Yes. Well, I mean, to be I mean, hating is fun, but you know. No, it just—I don't know about you. It just comes naturally for me. Sometimes I have to catch myself, and I'm like, for a lot, like focus. <laughs> And like not cussing for me, it's the behavioral stuff. It's just behaving. Yeah. Um, but yeah, uh, besides that, how have you been? I've been good. I've been good. I was gonna say I've been on my best behavior lately, thanks to Chris Statlander and Willow. So uh, you know, they've been another inspiration to me. So um, you know, you're inspired by them both. Yes, yes, yes. So the cursing has like gone down, I would say at least like 98% so far. So 98 that we love that. We love that. Ramadan is already like making positive changes in your life. So um Fantastic. let's get into that actually. So this is um the main thing that we have going on right now. So how did working with them come around? So it actually was um my idea combined with the with the Will Washington idea and then we presented it to Tony and he loved it. And then it kind of just snowballed from there. So, you know, I think it was one of those pitches that like it helped everyone involved. So, um, you know, Willow has been rocking and rolling and, you know, Statlander had that great match with Riho. And, you know, um, as you saw on Wednesday, you know, the women main event it and, uh, you know, it was a great match. Yeah. Um, so like, where are we hoping that you know, we're at by the time that All In at Wembley comes around. Do we know? I mean, Do you have any ideas? I mean, I'm thinking about gold, the the TBS championship, the AEW women's championship. You know, I think with with uh, with Stat and Willow, I think the sky is the limit. Okay, so in terms of like what you have going on uh, with the girls, um, what is it that gravitated you towards Chris Statlander in particular? Because it seems like there's kind of some friction with Willow, so I want, I just want to unpack that. Um, I think with Statlander, I think anyone with two eyes who can see, you know, it's just a lot of potential. You know, there's some untapped potential. You know, I think she's a, a funny, creative person. Um, I think she has a lot of, of great ideas that she always lays on the table. So I just thought it'd be something different and. You know, we have a lot of history, um, especially when she 
slapped me on the back of the head. So that little nugget kind of just started it all. And she's been associated with best friends and Willow. And, you know, that's kind of how Willow got into the equation. So, uh, okay. yeah. So yes. you're not trying to get that to betray her best friend? No, not at all. I, I, you know, when you, when you think about the name Stokely Hathaway, I mean, you think about peace and harmony. So uh, right. just, no, no. No. So I think a lot of people, this is not my allegations, but I think a lot of people want to know, is there anything romantic going on? Like, are there feelings involved? No. Um, okay. You know, I'm trying to think of the, of the, the most PC way to, to do this, you know, it's Ramadan, you know, so. Um, yeah. <laughs> Not a milkman, you know. So um, this is this is a, a strictly business relationship. And, okay. You know. Okay. Working out. We just, yeah, we're keeping it halal, anyways. Um, yeah. So um, let's get into Mercedes for a little bit because obviously she's the hot topic, and you know the fans really want to see her getting involved with Willow and Stat in the future. Um, and of course, you're heavily involved with uh, the AW women right now. Um, do you currently see there being, you know, a future with potentially, you know, Mercedes working with Stat and Willow? Um, I think that's a huge possibility. I mean, we saw Mercedes kind of endorse Willow at the end of Dynamite. You know, she made the save because some hooligans attacked Chris Statlander backstage. So, you know, I I think I think that is. Um, you know, on the table. And okay. I think it, it'd be like a great opportunity for, for the both of them. Have you met her before? No, no. I mean, we, you know, like cross paths um, backstage and whatnot, but it was a, like a hectic, busy day for everyone. But, you know, the, the little bit that I saw of her, I mean, she seemed like, you know, she was having the time of her life. So, you know, it was pretty exciting seeing someone else be excited. So that was pretty cool. Yeah, it's it's very inspiring. Uh, you just kind of felt like straight away, it felt like a new era, um, especially for the women. Uh, so what is it that you think that she brings to AEW? I think she brings a uniqueness. I think she brings experience. And I think, you know, she will open up a lot of doors. You know, I, I, I think women main eventing the show, I think that's going to happen more often. And like, I think that is needed. I think it's 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 necessary. You know, um, and I think she will bring, you know, different, unique storylines and, you know, just, again, opportunities to like all the women, you mm -hmm. know, because to, to work with her, it means that you will learn something, you know, you will go into that match um, not knowing something and you will come out going, oh, hey, like this is this has been like a great experience for me. Now I know this, this and this. And like, I think I think that's great. Uh, for all the women there yeah do you uh is she someone that you could see yourself working with like either on your side or going against her i mean i would love to you know um i think that'd be great you know it's aew so i think the possibilities are endless uh i personally would love to happen because you know she is the ceo and with that title comes a lot of money and i think we all need money and i would love to have a new hellcat so um absolutely yeah yeah Actually, with that said, because we, like, it's such a well-known thing, like, uh, Mercedes is such a legend at this at, at this point in her career, even, like, when she was much, like, younger in her 20s, like, she was already, like, cementing herself as an icon in wrestling. So now we're kind of seeing, you know, the two women that you're working with, uh, Chris Statlander and Willow Nightingale, they're kind of getting to that point where um, they're really, their potential is starting to show. And, um, like, where do you see things going for them um i think you know where things are now you know there are two championships you know we have a great champion in in julia hart uh we have a great champion in tony storm and i think you know there's like a lot of new women who have showed up the past few months i mean you look at um queen abanada you know i think mm -hmm. with, with all those different people uh, um different women in the mix, I think it's going to create like a very exciting division. And I think that that Statlander and Willow, I think they're going to be like a huge part of that. So I think, you know, 
like you asked earlier, you know, where do I see them going at the end of the year? You know, I think they both will have championship gold. And yeah. if they at the same time, that's fantastic. Yeah. And honestly, I, I would want to see that myself too, just as a fan. Um, yeah, we love both of them. So I'm always like known on the podcast to mostly care about the women regardless. Like, you know, there's maybe like a handful of men that I care about, period, not even just in wrestling. Um, so it pains me to have to do this, but oh, no. I do want to ask, even though you're heavily involved with the women, are you interested in working with any of the males? I mean, personally, by the way, by the way, I love that you're involved with the women. Like, I, I, I just love that. Like, um, so, you know, a lot of fans kind of like fantasy book you with maybe like Powerhouse Hobbs. Um, is there anyone that you have in mind, like of the males that you would be interested in working with? And is Powerhouse Hobbs one of them? Yeah, I mean, Will Hobbs is just fantastic. I mean, that dude is just a phenomenal athlete. I mean, he can pretty much do anything. I mean, he, you know, if we were, I would say if we were were brothers, you know, he got all the good genes, you know, um, <laughs> all the bad ones. So, you know, Will Hobbs, if I was a professional wrestler, he is what I would want to be. So, um, yes, of course, I would love to work with him. You know, I, um, I think he's in good hands right now. But, you know, if that opportunity presents itself, yeah, I mean, I would, I would definitely take advantage of it. So is there anyone else that you had in mind? Like, what, what would be, like, your number one pick? Um, I mean, I would love to work with Big Bill again. I mean, he was, you know, a lot of fun, a good guy. You know, I'm sure we'll get into, um, you know, that time period later. Um, Ricky Starks, I think he's another talented guy. Um, I mean, it's so many people on the roster. Um, you know, you have, like, a Shane Taylor. Um, you know, you have, uh, uh, like, a Will Ospreay. Like, I mean, I could go on and on and on. But, uh, it's a lot of, of great uh Great new talent in AEW right now. Yeah. Um, one thing that I found interesting about sort of your career with AEW up until this point is how you how much you bounced around. Uh, it's really hard to kind of pin you down and like see you doing one thing and being in part of one particular division. Um, so like we've seen that, we've seen you doing um, ROH authority figure type of stuff. Um, what about this has been a good fit for you compared to other stuff, like what you're doing now? Uh, I like how you called me in a nice way, the AEW floozy that I've just been around and work with everyone. So uh. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie to you. Like, have you seen what the job market looks like? What this economy looks like? Everyone is doing that. Like everyone just kind of jumps around. <laughs> no one really. Uh... Okay. Okay. Thank you. I appreciate it. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah. I mean, it's been quite the journey, but like, I feel like character wise, that is something that my character would do. You know, it's kind of like, uh, like Tommy from Martin, right? No one ever knew what Tommy did. And I feel like it's the same thing, you know, from like bouncing from like this opportunity to the next, you know, I, I feel like that is a hundred percent something that Stokely Hathaway would do if he was a real person. So I've enjoyed it uh, from, you know, starting in AEW to like the firm to like ring of honor to what I'm doing now, you know, it's been, it's been cool. Like just like putting all the pieces together and just, you know, trying to make it, you know, tie all together. Um, so yeah, uh, I would say, you know, the, the stuff I did with Joe that, that has probably been one of my favorite things so far among a bunch of other things. Yeah. So, why don't you talk about that a little bit? Because I, I did have like Joe on the agenda. Like, uh, what was it like working with Joe? I do know he's like pretty important to you on a professional and personal level, but is there anything that maybe we haven't heard? Yeah, I mean, it's it's the obvious. I learned a lot from Joe. Joe is, or Joe can be a mentor to anyone. You know, I think that is one of, of the great things about AEW is that you have so many people like Joe. You know, you have a Brian, you have a Claudio, a Moxley that you can go up to and ask advice and they will, you know, it doesn't matter whether it's a busy day, they will take time out of their day to help you. So actually working with Joe was just phenomenal. Um, and it was like a little pitch that like I put together and it was funny because I gave it to Joe and I honestly thought Joe was gonna be like, hey man, fuck off. <laughs> and so I gave it to him. He was like, oh yeah, we can work with this. And I was like, oh, 
what? So, you know, we, we brought it to Tony. He thought it was funny. And then, so the storyline was supposed to have ended with Joe versus Dalton Castle for the Ring of Honor television title. But Joe got involved with the Devils. So it kind of just ended with Joe and I versus the boys, which that was a lot of fun. Um, and uh, and yeah, I, I learned so much from Joe, just from like promos to even just putting together a tag match with him. You know, he's he's been a great resource and honestly, he he's a champion that AEW needed. So, you know, to see him in that position, I think is just really cool from like a, a fan and a, and a coworker perspective. Right. So one thing that I noticed is that like, obviously you being super hands-on and everything, like, do you prefer writing out like your own, like creative stories? Are, uh, do you like, do you prefer to like maybe like adapt to something that is given to you or do you like to just come up with things? I would say it's kind of like a mix. I mean, I think that everyone needs a filter. I feel like there's not one person who knocks it out of the park every single time. So I think everyone needs someone to say, hey, that, you know, what about this? Or, hey, like, that's really fucking stupid. Like, so, you know, I prefer to have someone be like, hey, like, maybe we shouldn't do this now, or maybe we should go in this um, direction. So um, that's why I try to bounce ideas off of different people, you know, because I feel like that's what works best, like having an actual collaboration as opposed to I'm going to write out all my stuff for this long or have someone else write all the stuff for me, you know, being able to have a say or, you know, have input, I think is, is, is what works best for me. Okay. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I, I feel like, um, I would just want to see you be like completely creative, like have your own freedom. Um, but that's just me. We might have to clip this part out. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, to be honest, like you're, you're talking about like, um, collaborating and stuff. I honestly feel like you could just take the ball and run with it. It's funny, we had like a, a debate on the Wrestle Careers podcast like a while ago where I was saying like, a lot of wrestlers just don't have the facilities to be creative. Um, you know, they need creative to make them better. But like, I just genuinely do feel like you're one of the people that can just like, really like if you're locked in, like you can just create gold. Um, and I'm not just saying this just cause like, it's we're talking right now. Um, just genuinely wanting to see more of you. Um, I'll cash up you after, after we're done. So thank you, I appreciate it. Cash up you for what? <laughs> for the compliment, I appreciate it. Um, but yeah, I mean, I I think being able to have the input that I've had, you know, I think is is great because you know not everybody gets that right. Like like some people aren't. I wouldn't say allowed, but you know, it's one of those things where, to your point, not everyone has the capacity to say, hey, like, what if we did this? What if we did that? So I'm very appreciative that the fact that I can say, what if we did this or just offer a suggestion, you know? So um, I think the perfect example has been with, with Staten Willow. You know, I think right. the past few weeks have been fantastic. And, you know, I think the upcoming weeks and months will, you know, will get even better. So Danielson is a part of, you know, the disciplinary committee we all know this right and you are very wild on twitter so what i want to know <laughs> has he ever had to pull you to the side and be like chill chill or is he is it a museum no i mean i personally have not been yelled at or fined uh to my knowledge i mean i wouldn't say my twitter is is wild i would say it's like uh i would say it's it's pg 13 so uh, yeah <laughs> yeah I, yeah. I, it could get it could get much more wild, but in terms of like wrestling, because you know, people would, are sensitive around here. That and, is, and the media too. My people too. I'm not just talking about you. Like in wrestling, we just happen to be real sensitive. So, I, mean, I would I would say the craziest thing I probably tweeted recently was like the Darby Sean Kingston tweet, but I thought that was pretty funny. Um, but you're yo. <laughs> Your Eddie Kingston spoof had me dying. Thank you, thank you. Now that I, that I will say, I sent it to to different people to make sure. That we really? that. So, uh, you know, I was safe there. But uh, yeah, I think I think as long as it's not anything just completely egregious, you know, I think it's fine. I think if I got on X or Twitter, or whatever, and was like, hey, you know, I think I should 
you know, I should beat Christian in like 20 seconds for the TNT championship, you know, I think I would probably get like a call very quick. Like it was really? or something, you know, I think they would like, you know, talk to me right away. But aside from something like that, you know, I think it's fine. Okay. So um, one thing that I also noted and that also I'm like a pretty big fan of is uh, your referencing of pop culture, specifically uh, black pop culture. Uh, what I want to know is like, what are some aspects of pop, pop culture that are inspiring to you? Things that you like to reference, um, like kind of getting into that? Yeah, I mean, it's something that I can't help. Um, I think Renee Paquette is like sick of my shit because every time we do a food tape, <laughs> like, I'll, like I'll just spout out like all these different references and then she just like looks at me, you know, just kind of like, where do you just get this shit? And like, I have no yeah. idea, you know, it's kind of just in my head, but I think I watched a lot of, of television as a kid, probably way too much. And I think that kind of just, uh, just what goes in my head. But, you know, I think it was just like my upbringing, you know, a lot of In Living Color, just Martin, Living Single, the Wayne Brothers. I mean, just like the pretty, I would say, cliche, like classic um, shows. And I think, you know, that kind of a spiral from like, um, uh, or spiraled into different aspects of comedy from like, you know, a Robin Harris, a, a Bernie Mac, a, a Steve Harvey, um, uh, a Dion Cole. I think that kind of led me into a different have too. So all of those combined, I think it's just these little, I would say, uh, planets in my brain. So you yeah, know, from one to the other. And that's where most of the references I would say come from. Yeah. And I love that because not everyone is going to get it. I think like you might do that on purpose. <laughs> um, um, no, I would, I would say the only thing that I said on on television that like I'm 99% certain that no one had any idea what I was saying. Oh, no, the two things was when I think it was Lee and Big Bill versus Jungle Boy and Hook uh, right before LA. And so we cut this promo and I think I said, oh, I said, Su Wu. <laughs> and I got threw up some gang sides. <laughs> and so I think the production people laughed, but I think they had no idea what I was talking about. And so what did it That's crazy. Yeah, I think some dude on Reddit was like, yeah, like I was there live and I was so scared and like I looked at someone else and he was terrified. <laughs> <laughs> so that was one. And I would say the second thing was probably uh, when I told Karen Jarrett that I wasn't a milkman. I think no one had any idea what I was talking about. No, they wouldn't. <laughs> what does uh, bringing this aspect of black culture to wrestling, which is, as we know, like predominantly white, what does that mean to you? I think it's necessary. I mean, some people may disagree and, and feel like, oh, you know, you should cater to like this audience or that audience, but like, I'm me, you know, I am happy and appreciative of, of being who I am. So, you know, I'm going to honor that or, or you know, be true to myself as much as possible. So that's a big part of it. And I feel like it's my job to bring someone who looks like me into the product or into AEW. And if I don't, you know, be true to myself or, you know, try to, you know, include black culture into what I'm doing, you know, I think I'm doing uh, myself and my oh, yeah. service. So um, I think that's the biggest part of it for me. Yeah. And also, I love that you also aren't ashamed, or not that you should be, uh, to kind of bring the aspect of you being Muslim on the TV. Like I still, and like as a Muslim, right? And I don't consider myself a mark or anything, right? There is that one promo that you cut. I'm speaking candidly right now. I don't have the facts in front of me when this was, but um, I believe this was when you were doing something with the firm and you were joking about like getting Lee to convert to Islam or whatever. Um, by the way, I hope you're still working on that. Um, Yes. But um, just the fact that like you kind of just unabashedly just like are Muslim out loud and like, um, you know, make that like a part of your personality. Um, like I, I find that to be very important too. Is Lee converting or we, we, we deaded that? No, like we have, we have conversations about it. I think, you know, oh, really? 
Yeah, yeah. This was last October. Well, no, this is October before last. We went to the um, uh, the African American History Museum in D.C. and you know we were able to like to like walk through and we had like a candid conversation about it. But you know, for me, it's it's a part of my life, right? It's part mm-hmm. of my journey as a person. And like, I don't know everything, you know, I learn something new about myself or or Islam every day. And I think that that to me has been the best part about it. So, you know, I don't, I don't mind sharing the aspect on screen, you know, other mm-hmm. stuff, not really, but, you know, for me, it's, it's one of those things where, you know, it, it, it influences me. And it also, I think, influences uh, my character a bit as well. Oh, 100%. And, you know, what you said about not knowing everything, like, it doesn't matter, like, how long you've been studying Islam. Like, once you think you know everything, like, Allah will humble you. Um, you find that you don't really know anything, like. Yeah, yeah. And it was, you know, I thought about it at first because I think a lot of people use religion as, like, a ploy or, like, just a gimmick or like an excuse, you know. Um, mm-hmm. I think there's this joke: everybody talks to God when they can't talk to anyone else anymore, you know, because oh, wow. no one else wants to talk to them. So it's kind of one of those things where a lot of people go, "Oh, like you know, I've I've decided to like convert to this and do this," and it's really just like a hustle, you know. It's really just for a lot of times, you know, interviews or clickbait or whatever. So um, for me, it's important to to say what I have to say because you know there are some people who are true and genuine true and genuine about what they're doing. Yeah. And also just in general, like sometimes people in, in wrestling, if they use religion in their um in their character, it's kind of a heel tactic. You're kind of making a mockery of your own identity. Yeah. Um well actually like what do your what, what do you think about that in particular? Like when someone kind of like uses their identity in that kind of way, like, and kind of, in my opinion, like bastardizing it in a way. Um, Maybe you might look at it differently. Yeah, I think, I think it's tough. Like, I think, I think it depends on the person and, and what they are, I guess, um, exploiting because for them, it may not be full exploitation. So I think it's kind of, it's, it's like a tough thing to like gauge and answer because I feel like every, I feel like every situation could be different. And that's one thing that I've tried to work hard on is the fact that life isn't black and white. There are just so many shades of gray. So um, I know that's probably not the best answer, but you know, that's, uh, yeah. Yeah, no, I, I, I agree. I agree. Cause I just know if I was involved in wrestling, I would bring up like, Cause even in real life, like I'm the type of person, like at any conversation, like I'll bring up like things about my country, like some things that people didn't know or like about Islam. Cause it it kind of seems like um, when you are a part of a certain identity, to a degree, you represent all of your people. Even though we all we might say like maybe we shouldn't, um, there is kind of be going to be that degree of like, oh well, people are going to see you as a Muslim or a Black Muslim or a Black American or yeah. whatever the case might be, a professional wrestler. And you know, in the back of your head, like this person is gonna perceive this part of my identity if I come across wrong. Like, do you, do you get what I'm trying to say? Yeah, yeah, but I feel like, I don't know, with me, it's one of those things. And you know, this is why I think there are, are so many shades of gray. Mm-hmm. I, I just don't care, right? Like if somebody flat out said, oh, I don't wanna watch this guy because he's black and Muslim, good. I don't want you watching me anyway, you know, fuck off. Yeah. So, you know, I, that wouldn't concern me at all, but, but I see your point. Like, I feel like, you know, with, with other people, it could be troublesome, right? You know, it could be, you know, it could be traumatic for them because someone else doesn't like them because of, of who they are, you know? And I think, mm-hmm. I think it all depends on where they are in their personal journey. Yeah, I think most of this idea came from just seeing what a lot of people say in the comments, like in terms of like identity and and stuff like that. It seems like there's a certain demographic of fans that are just over it, but that could just kind of tie in with uh, a lot of things that are happening culturally. Like they'll be like, "Oh, I don't want to see this in wrestling." Yeah, you know. I mean, like here's the thing: like you you can't make everybody happy, and no matter 
no matter what this company does or that company does or, or what this wrestler does, like people are just going to be unhappy regardless. And that's one thing that I've learned. You can't, but you can't please everybody because yeah. it's one person who's going to be upset for whatever reason. And, and to be honest, they would be upset regardless. So, you know, you kind of just have to just ignore the comments and just move forward. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I definitely like find myself wanting to separate from. I mean, I'm I'm not a mark, so that's not my problem. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. <laughs> um, huh? I said the comments can be crazy, you know. Like I I won't lie, you know. I think it's one of those. I forgot what I put up. It was some video, and somebody replied with the most unhinged, just like nonsensical reply and I just looked at it and I was like oh well that's just that's just them and then I looked at their timeline and I was like oh well they're just cooked like they just have, <laughs> they're just in like another reality like they're just not on the same just spectrum as <laughs> as me so um you know I try to keep that in mind as well yeah yeah literally um but I mean all in all like um I see you as someone who's very important to, you know, the AW roster, uh, the community, and just generally very loved by the fans. So, um, of course, you're always appreciated by the WrestlePure staff. You're a friend of the, the brand now. Um, circling back to some of your old ventures, um, you had uh, did the storyline with the firm and, you know, after the initial plan sort of like fell through, um, was it something you hoped could have been reimagined? Uh, were you happy moving on from it anyway, the way that it panned out? Like, uh, like walk me through that story. Yeah, I mean, the initial purpose was kind of just negated after a couple of weeks. So, you know, it was one of those things where what do you do? You know, you put all these people together. And so we needed to to stick together and, and do what we could while we could. So. I was I was happy with how it ended. It didn't mm -hmm. the I think once we got into the Jungle Boy hook storyline, I think that's when we really like hit our groove. Um, but it actually for me was supposed to I think it was gonna end in March because me losing the hook, that was gonna be my write off until I went to Ring of Honor. But it it halted a bit because I think um uh, Oh, there was the final deletion match, which was a lot of fun. And I think I, someone told me, I can't remember exactly who, but like I needed to do that match to make it even because they didn't have like enough mm. to put in it. So, so that became kind of like the ending. And I thought, okay, like everything ended full circle. You know, we started this with Matt Hardy, we ended it with Matt Hardy and Jeff. And that was pretty wild to say that I wrestled of the Hardy Boys in their house. So um, I left the firm with a lot of fun moments and gems, yeah. which I was very, very appreciative of. Yeah. So, you know, you do have some stints of, you know, being in the ring, like, well, in the ring, getting physical, like with the Hardys, with Hook. Um, do you ever have like um, sort of the desire to want to do more things in the ring? Or do you prefer sort of like a managerial or... Um, sort of like an advocacy type of role? Um, I I like doing both, or, mm -hmm. or I would say I, I like doing both when when it, it makes sense, right? Like, um, I would say if if there's one other person that I would love to to wrestle, I think it's it's Eddie Kingston. And I think... I would love that, too. That's... Yeah. I mean, it's going to happen. I just don't know when, but... Um, he is one person I would love to wrestle because most importantly, he's a piece of shit. And I would love to say right. that Eddie Kingston on a national platform. So I think I would print it out, take it to my fridge. I think I would mail a copy to my family. And um, yeah, I think I would get t-shirts made as well. I think we need to get um, Eddie Kingston on the Wrestle of Pures podcast and Please. have the response for you. <laughs> Please. Love to hear it. Uh, I think he <laughs> He's a coward, but um, yeah, I'm I'm down to do more physical things. I mean, I would love to wrestle uh, Brian Danielson. I know it'll probably never happen, but um, if it did happen, uh, I'm I'm fairly certain I would win. Um, we talked about Will Hobbs. I, think I would probably beat him too. Uh, and, uh, 
Yeah. Yeah, I think that's my list. With my list so far. So throughout the course of you uh, managing just a range of different people, you have a very diverse uh, clientele. What was it like working with uh, some of the different people? Is there anything that stands out to you? Yeah, I mean, just learning who everyone was on a personal level was like a lot of fun. Like um, Ethan Page, like I worked with him before, but uh, this was more so on the indies. So to work with him on on television, like that was pretty exciting. Um, with like a Lee Moriarty, I mean, we talked about Lee. He's just a very creative and like innovative dude. So just his artwork, I admire and and um, and learn from. And uh, and Big Bill, like he's he's a super talented guy. And I would say if I got anything out of AEW that I didn't have before, it was it's probably his friendship along with Lexi Nairs. Like they're just probably the nicest people ever. Probably too nice for wrestling. So. Um, and, you know, to explain the type of person Big Bill is, you know, when he won the tag titles with Ricky, like I sent him a text. I was like, hey, man, congratulations. Really proud of you, yada, yada. And so he responds, no, man, I'm proud of you. And I'm like, I just had two uh -huh. a large fry and three cookies. Like, I don't think you should be proud of me right now, but, <laughs> but okay, Bill. But that's just the type of guy he is, you know, so. Um, very happy for him and everything that he's accomplished and yeah, sure. you know, I, I don't think he's touched just one eighth of, of of the success that he will in aew so um yeah it's been great just working with joe like the boys were a lot of fun um you know they are two incredibly talented guys and you know right now just working with all the women julia hart and sky blue they are incredibly evil but um being able to like work with them has been fun as well. Yeah, I was actually wondering, um, you know, this is kind of delving into your past life a bit, but like, do you still keep in touch with your old clientele from the Diamond Mine? Of course, of course. I mean, we don't talk as frequently because, you know, mm -hmm. they are doing their thing and, you know, they are very successful and like I'm happy for them. But, but yeah, you know, we will, you know, hit each other up and, and, uh, and check on each other. So, yeah. Yeah, um, yeah. the evolution of sort of like your clientele, people that you've represented, like it's, it's amazing. Um, I can't wait to see how things go in the future for you. Um, I mean, we have like, the women are doing really big things and you're gonna be definitely a part of that history and gonna be like in the main event very soon. Like I see it for all of you. Um, oh. Is there anything else that you wanted to kind of touch on with the, the girls? Uh, yeah, I mean, I again, I think with with a stat and Willow, I think the sky is the limit, and like I really do see gold around their waist by the end of the year and together, like no division, no separation, you know, peace, harmony with all of us. Because yeah, you know, I would never cause such a thing. So uh, <laughs> yeah, I just I think I think they're going to end 2024 very strong and with the bang. Yes, uh, so I can't wait to see everything. Um, and to uh, wrap this up, um, you know, as someone who, you know, isn't like lacing up his boots every week and, and getting in the ring and wrestling and training and all this stuff, I mean, you're very fit, you take care of yourself, you're, you're a smart guy. What is it that keeps you going with wrestling when you're kind of not getting in the ring? Like, what, what is it that, that just keeps you going? I would say, I think for me, like I'm not really, uh, I'm trying to think of the right way to, to say this. I think I don't think about wrestling that often, like when I'm not doing it. And I think that's because, you know, I think it's, I think it's very healthy to think about doing other things, right? Like whether it's like music, you know, like Swerve has his, you know, his music career. Yeah. He already has his art and fashion. Hook has his fashion. You know, Ethan Page, he has like Alpha One. I feel like everyone has like their thing. And I think that's like the healthiest way to like go about it. And you know, if if, if there are people who wrestling is like their everything, that's cool. But I think for me, it's just having that, that separation, right? You know, so for me, it's like on the weekends is comedy, you know, I can, I can do that. And then I can, I can go back um, to wrestling. So 
uh, I don't know if that answers your question, but no, but it, it, I, it does. I mean, I know for the normal person, the what's going to motivate you with work is just having a life outside of work. Like you don't want to just think about work twenty four seven. Yeah, um, I feel like you have to give yourself those those breaks, and I think that's what keeps me going with with wrestling because I feel like if it was if it was my everything, you know, I think it it would be like a little exhausting. But I think having mm -hmm. I, well, I think having a whole bunch of things as opposed to having like one everything, I think that's like the best way to to live, in my opinion. Yes, no, a hundred percent. Um, well, thank you so much for coming to uh, the Wrestle Pierce podcast. I'm so proud of this interview. Uh, uh, thank you so much for blessing us. Um, of course. Is there anything else you wanted to uh, get off your chest? Um, yeah, just follow me on. Uh, X, Twitter, whatever you want to call it, Stokely Hathaway. Uh, make sure you follow Willow Nightingale and, and Chris Statlander as well. Um, Eddie Kingston is a piece of shit. And uh, yeah, I think that's it. Oh, and, and oh, one last thing. Regardless of what Taz tells anybody, I am taller than him. So I wish he would stop telling people that on commentary and backstage. I'm taller than Taz, all right? I just want everybody to know that before we go. Yep, it's official. All right. Uh, thank you so much. Okay. Thank you. Bye bye.